Hello, all you lovely souls who revel in embracing life just as I do. This is Nirja Malik and you are welcome into my world of I Embrace. And what do we intend to do here? We delve into the many layers and shades of my life, exploring resilience, positivity, strength, and the inherent fun and laughter that lies deep within each of us. Interludes from my own exciting and adventurous journey, my personal battles and victories that have brought forth innumerable lessons in my life. It is these learnings that I place on a golden platter with utmost humility for your personal consumption. Hello, yet again. Imagine I called you my soul listeners. Obviously, as a soul family, we have been connected in other lifetimes, in this lifetime, and so once again, I welcome you into my world where I embrace everything and everyone. And as I know, you have embraced me. And today, we will talk about miscarriages. Miscarriages, a nightmarish fear every woman silently experiences the moment she conceives. This is the only fear a woman faces very intimately and privately within herself. The announcement of pregnancy brings forth immense joy within the family and which, like an uncontrollable hurricane, sweeps throughout the neighborhood in no time at all. After all, good news tidings are meant for all to celebrate. Isn't that so? But for the woman who is pregnant and who can actually feel a life forming and growing within her, sometimes the trepidations of pregnancy are cantuan. Apart from all the apprehensions that exist, there are two concerns that may haunt the mind. One, is the baby being nurtured healthily within? And two, will it eventually survive nine months in her womb before it is born? There is no one on earth who can prepare herself most capably guided by her instincts and the advice of her elders to bring up a child within the confines of her womb so dexterously than a woman who is just months away from motherhood. And yet, miscarriages happen. Yes, they do. Most often due to reasons beyond control, tearing apart the sanctity of the woman who has now to bear a loss, unexplainable and yet profoundly factual. Sometimes the loss is not only personal, but deliberately and emotionally intimidating. Frankly, the loss of a child during pregnancy can only be deeply felt by a woman 
because it is within her the bereavement has occurred within her emotionally physically mentally spiritually miscarriages unfortunately for me were not an unfamiliar occurrence since the year i got married i went through several miscarriages every time i conceived it was so short lived that i began slowly to lose hope of ever becoming a mother i so wanted to have a child i love children always did so the desire to become a mother kept reigniting itself in my heart shortly after every loss while in london in 1981 my husband mandeep who was always so deeply concerned for me decided to escort me to consult a known specialist who operated out of his well appointed clinic on harley street as to why i kept having miscarriages on hearing my plight he made me go through a thorough examination conducted a detailed dnc which he felt was extremely vital at this stage and finally even gave me a rubella injection very soon to mandeep's and my delight i got pregnant again this time i was very confident that my pregnancy would not get blighted as it was the first time that it had happened after a professional consultancy but that new find confidence also ebbed after i miscarried once again and where did i miscarry from london i had driven to paris with my relatives and voila on the streets of france while touring around everything came to a grinding halt while driving i miscarried one cannot blame any incident because i miscarried thereafter also many times but it was a sad and shocking affair we were back in mumbai and the desire to become a mother still hadn't abated i seemed to be having a retention problem after every conception and that optimistically encouraged doctors to inject me with hormones every now and then as a solution and very soon i was pregnant once again this time i made up my mind on a different course of action i had miscarried just a few months frequently then it was 3 months 6 months and this time i decided on a different course of action i secretly desired to nurture my baby in surroundings where i would not have a single responsibility of doing anything other than facilitating my baby to grow healthy and strong within i lovingly cajoled mandeep to allow me to have my baby in my parents home much to my jubilation he adoringly smiled and agreed very shortly i shifted to my parents home i felt so wondrously relaxed no worries no responsibilities neither as a wife or that of managing a home i was once again foot loose and fancy free just me and my little one i hugged my abdomen 
with all the love and affection I could muster, so full of overflowing feelings of love and affection. After a very long while, I could feel a mother's natural protective instincts coursing through my veins. This time I felt my little one and I were going to traverse a wonderful journey together. My little one had the most fascinating way of communicating with me. She would gently kick inside of me precisely thrice a day. As she grew from a small undistinguishable fetus to an eight-month-old. The three times a day were 6 a.m., 1 p.m. and again at 6 p.m. It was uncanny how regularly and true to timing she would reach out to me from within. Every time she did, I would feel so wonderfully sanctified. The pain of having to bear several miscarriages at different points of life and different months in the past seemed to diminish in totality as the joy of having my little one growing deep inside of me intensified as the days began to glide past. My little one and I bonded so heavenly in a home where the two of us hadn't a care in the world. I was having a whale of a time in my parents' home. We were on top of the world, my baby and I. She was being nourished in my parents' home and that was all that she needed. Here, I felt joyous, free and pampered and loved by none other than my very old mother, the maid Vasanti, who still takes care of my mom even today as I speak (laughs) these words, would be careful not to wear her piles around her ankles when she passed by my bedroom, situated on the second floor of our Duple home. And why was that? Because every time she would pass by, I would hear her piles jingling and it would instigate major hunger pangs in me and I would demand a lion's share of whatever was available in the kitchen, much to everyone's consternation. And understandably, because my little one was now eight months old and I had gained weight quite atrociously, And then one blissful morning in July, I happened to have overslept and hence never knew whether my little one had reached out to me as usual at 6 a.m. The day went on as smoothly as it normally did from the day I shifted to my mother's home. My close friends from G.D. Sumani where I taught students on a regular basis, came over during the afternoon. The teachers and I spent a couple of hours engaged in some delightful conversations. Conversations that were so engrossing that I hadn't realized whether my little one had reached out to me as she usually did by 1 p.m. It was when the sun had begun to set into the horizon the same evening that I began to realize that my little one had stopped communicating with me. It was past 6 p.m. and not a movement from her whatsoever. This was most unusual and I began to feel a little perturbed over it. I decided to talk to my mother and we subsequently called up my gynecologist. When I told him that there seemed to be no movement at all, he said that it was quite normal, as during the eighth month, most babies have a tendency to sleep quite a bit. 
but that didn't convince me. I knew my little one. She had never ever failed to communicate with me from the time that she was strong enough to move her limbs and kick out. Finally, he gave in and we went across to meet with him. Since we didn't fall into the category of an emergency case, my gynecologist decided to finish meeting with his earlier patients before us. That didn't bother me. I have this wonderful effortlessness, which very few people I know have. I'm never lonely. The moment I'm alone, all I have to do is chant a job, close my eyes and happily go to sleep. And that is exactly what I did till 11 p.m. when my doctor was eventually able to meet me. He tried to trace the little one's heartbeat with the sonographic machine. My mother was holding my hands while the two of us looked at him expectantly. I could make out from his facial expression that there wasn't a beat that the machine could detect. God, how often had I gone through this experience in the past? And now, once again, my gynecologist looked at us with an expression that said it all. After trying it out with a small hand sonography, he got the big machine and did a thorough checkup only to discover that there was no heartbeat at all. He directed me to immediately get hospitalized. All that my mother told him was to not let me go through a caesarean, but a naturally induced delivery. And why was that? Because she felt that if I went through a caesarean, I would have trouble, perhaps, getting through it because I wouldn't have a baby to hold on to and to heal myself faster. Breach Candy Hospital. My husband Mandeep arrived the next morning. When he came in, I requested my mother to go back home and to rest for a while since she had been with me right through the night. And I also didn't want her to go through this struggle along with me. In a short while, that very morning, while Mandeep was around me, I began to feel an excruciating pain. Whenever the doctors would come to check, they would say that the dilation was not enough and to wait and to wait and to wait. But this excruciating pain was unbearable and I reached out to him to call for assistance. It is then that he saw the head of the fetus trying to emerge out of me and hurried out to find a doctor. He returned with a huge, burly-looking matron, well known to everyone in breech camp. She was the only one he could find because both the gynecologist and his assistants were busy elsewhere in the hospital. The pain began to sear through me like a hot bolt of lightning. The force of an induced labor of a lifeless child caused the fetus to exit out, tearing through me even before an incision could be made by the matron. That is called an episiotomy. I felt jagged, sharp edges, scraping forcibly against my tender viscerera as my stillborn little one moved out of me, injuring the path she had 
to take causing pain that I had never ever felt before. It was so unbearable that I grabbed the belt of the matron and pulled her towards me while screaming my lungs out and in the process snapping the belt. I kept telling her, Sister, save me. Save me. I am dying. Such was the intensity of the agonizing pain. And then it was all over. It was the matron who finally delivered the stillborn and placed her in my arms. My little one had been a seven-pound baby. Tall for her age, thick, bushy hair on her head, delicate fingers and pink rosebud lips creased in a serene smile. I held her in my arms for a while before my mother came in and took her away from me. She was finally buried by my mother, Mandeep, and both my father and mother-in-law. I sat on the hospital bed and vacantly looked out of the window and the tears started flowing like waters gushing out from a burst dam. I was not hysterical and neither in a state of uncontrollable physicality. It was just a silent gush of pent-up emotions emptying itself out once and for all. After all, unless one doesn't empty oneself out of all sorrow and grief, nothing curative can ever flow back in to nurture and rekindle another new beginning. So the tears flowed on and on and on till there weren't a drop to shed anymore. And that's when I embraced it all. I embraced the loss of my little one. I embraced what I had just experienced. I embraced all my past miscarriages. I embraced the fact that I would still never give up. <laughs> and most of all, I embraced life dauntingly in whichever manner it would from now on unveil itself to me. And then a thought whispered through the crevices of my mind. Over the last eight months, I had experienced happiness that was so marvelously stimulating and gratifying. I had been so happy, so blissful, so contented, so filled with ecstatic warmth and love. Just being together with my little one, she had wiped away all my past dissensions and as a reward had given me an opportunity through her subtle communications to make me feel what it was to be a mother. Something I had so deeply desired all along. So I thought to myself, I was so fortunate to have been chosen by God to have her within me for eight long months, enjoying a deeply bonded relationship I had never ever experienced in the past. And a relationship that healed me completely. A relationship that taught me so much, gave me so much and changed my life eternally. I was so grateful to God to have chosen me to be an abode for my little one to live in as destined for her conceivably because that was the only period of time left for her 
to finally passage out of the spiritual cosmic cycle of birth and rebirth as it is fated for all of us and now i could sit back in the silence and stillness that had overtaken me happily and in peace because i felt that my little one was a jeevan mukt i was still sitting on my bed looking out of the window calm and tranquil now that i had embraced it all when my mother came back from bedding my little one she sat by me and held me tight after all it was her loss too it was a grandchild she had just buried she looked at me for a while with so much of love affection empathy and understanding as only a mother could contain within herself for her own child and asked me if there was anything that i needed from her anything that she could do for me i had embraced it all and had come to terms with everything and was ready to live life in peace once again so all i could tell her with a faint smile finding its way to my lips was that i was hungry and the chicken biryani prepared in breach candy hospital was in famously tasteful my mother's jaw dropped she looked shattered i think she wondered for a moment if i had lost it all if i had lost my senses to the pain and sorrow and suffering that i had gone through at losing my little one but something in her made her realize that though she still had to come to terms with the loss of a beautiful grandchild i had somehow or the other gone through the process while she mandeep and my in-laws were away and reached a space deep within my inner being of acceptance and of a passing on of something so important and of reliving my life once again i am brace isn't just about my journey of conquering cancer it's about embracing life in all its entanglement and beauty remember in this journey of life you are never alone and i need to thank you for becoming a part of this inspiring journey thank you for joining me today on i embrace and my heartfelt wishes stay resilient stay positive and most importantly keep embracing life in all its glory <laughs>